This is a finding the net force on an object in two dimensions. There are a number of different ways we can go about doing this. So we'll do about two different examples to illustrate the, the possibilities. Um, let's take a, a simple example, first of all. A crate. Well, maybe we better make it a um, crate with a mass. So a 50 kilogram crate. Uh, is being pulled over some ice. And because it's ice, it's very slippery, we're just going to say there's no friction at this point to worry about, because we haven't really talked that much about friction yet. So there's no friction. One person is pulling at zero degrees with eight newtons. The other is going to be pulling at 90 degrees with 10 newtons. And what we want to find out is calculate the acceleration of the crate. Okay. So what makes this two dimensional is if you look at the zero degrees and the 90 degrees, one person is pulling sideways and the other person is pulling sort of in an uppy downy kind of way if you were looking from the top. And so we have two different dimensions that we have to deal with. So we'll start by drawing a picture. The picture that we draw will simply be a top view. Here's the crate. We have one person pulling this way. And that's eight newtons, zero degrees. And the other person is pulling at 90 degrees, which would be this way, with 10 newtons. So there's the picture that we could use. We still solve the problem the same way. We still write our net force equation. F net <coughs> equals, and it would be the sum of all the forces that are pulling. And there are two of them. So. I'll call one the 8 Newton force, and I'll call the other the 10 Newton force. So somehow we have to add those up. But we can't just add them and say that they add up to 18 because they are not in a line. So we can't add them with regular plus and minus. We have to add them with two-dimensional vector math, which means we have to do the old tip-to-tail method. Tip-to-tail method. So to figure out what the sum of those two things are, we have to draw them tip to tail. So I'm going to do that over here. Here is the 8 Newton. And I'll put in a little benchmark here, a little reference frame. And then tip to tail means the other one must be drawn here, 10. So there are the two vectors drawn tip to tail. Then to figure out the some of those vectors, we draw the line from beginning to end. And this red line now represents F8 plus F10. It's the sum of those two vectors. So we proceed to figure this out using the math that we are familiar with. Um, first of all, it's a right triangle because this 8 and this 10 are at 90 degrees to each other, right? 0 and 90. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared equals 8 squared plus 10 squared, 64 plus 100, which is 164. So C is the square root of 164. Uh, let's just pull up this here. 
about 12.8. And of course, these are now newtons. The units that we're using are no longer, we're not drawing vectors that involve velocities or distance and displacement. These are force vectors, so our unit is newtons. That's how much the net force is going to be, but we also need to remember that we need to figure out the direction of the net force. So we're going to need the angle that goes with the red line as well. So uh, we can do that with a little tan theta. It's opposite over adjacent, so 10 over 8. And if we figure 10 divided by 8 and do the inverse 10, we get about 51 degrees for theta. And that's a standard mathematical position already, so that's the angle that this I'll be using. So the answer to the sum of these two numbers, which I will write underneath, is 12.8 newtons and a direction of 51 degrees. And of course, F net is still MA, like it's always been. And then it said that the mass of the crate was how much? 50 kilograms. So we can put 50A equals 12.8 newtons, 51 degrees. And then we have to divide both sides by 50. So 12.8 divided by 50 comes out to an acceleration of 0.26-ish. And that would be meters per second squared. And when you divide a vector like this one by a scalar mass, all you do is divide the magnitudes. The direction doesn't change. So the direction will just get carried on down 51 degrees. And that makes sense because if the net force is in that direction, then so should the acceleration will be in the same direction. So we've done everything the same except at this stage right here, we didn't just add up the numbers using plus and minus. We used triangle math to figure out the, the sum of those two forces. That's really all that's different. Now, it doesn't have to give you, uh, you don't have to have a right angle triangle. Sometimes you could have an example where the triangle might be not a right angle. So let's do another example using that. And the only difference will be we'll have to change up our Pythagorean theorem make, make use of cosine law and sine law. Okay? So let's go ahead then. Let's pick another uh, example. Let's say we had a block that was being pulled uh, in this direction, but also in this direction. We'll call this 8. Uh, we'll call this 12. And we'll say that there's an angle here associated with this of 30 degrees. Find the net force, and of course we'll use, uh, let's use 20 kilograms this time. 20 kilograms. So we start the same way. F net equals the sum of the forces. And there are two of them again. There they are. But in order to calculate this sum, I can't just add 8 and 12 and say it's 20. I have to do the tip-to-tail method in order to get <coughs> the sum of those. So let's go over here, down to the side a little bit, and let's figure that out. If I draw these two vectors tip to tail, um, what I would get is a line going up like this, which is 8, and then another line going down like this, which is 12. Now, we have some problems here. I'm not sure how far to draw this line. Maybe I should go a little farther. Maybe I should go not so far. I really don't know if it's going to be right on the axis. That looks like they're both about 8. So if I draw this a little further, about there, let's, let's go to here. Well, then when I do my resultant, I get this angle here that I'm unsure of. And I'm not going to know whether it's going to be obtuse or acute. There's the whole sign law with its ambiguous case, and I get a little nervous. Right? However, we'll just keep that in the back of our mind. We know this is 12. And we also know that this part is 30 degrees. 
which means that inside the triangle, because it's all 90, I have to have a 60 in here. So I can crunch out a cosine law and see what I get. What I would get would be uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c, which is equal to 12 squared. Whoops, 12 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 12 times 8 times the cosine of the angle in between them, 60 degrees. And then we would have to crunch this out. 60 cos times 8 times 12 times 2 equals negative plus 64 plus 144 equals square root. C comes out to about 10.6 when we do this. That part is not in question. But the next part that's in question is how we get the direction. Normally, we would try to find this angle right here. But I'm worried about that angle because I don't really know if that red line is a little above or below the axis. So instead, I'm going to try to find this angle because this angle is, I'm pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be under 90. And then I can subtract from 180 to get the angle I need. So recognizing the ambiguous case of sine law, I'm going to do that one. So it would be 8 over sine theta equals, and it would be, uh, this is now 10.6 because I figured it out. So it would be 10.6 over sine 60. <coughs> and what I would get then is 60 sine times 8 equals divided by 10.6 and then inverse. I would get a theta of about 41 degrees for this guy right here, which means that if I take 41 and 60 and subtract from 180, my actual angle that I want over here would be about 79 degrees, right? So the answer to this little thing up here, where I'm trying to add these up, is 10.6, so MA, equals 10.6 newtons. Now, what's this angle going to be? And you can see, of course, that I drew my picture poorly, didn't I? If this is 79 degrees, my picture makes it look like it's bigger than 90, and it's not, which is why we did the other angle. But here's the problem. I have to measure around. So I have to measure 90 plus 79, which is 169 degrees, to get the standard angle position from the x-axis. So that's a little bit complicated. That brings in a lot of places where you could make a mistake. And uh, I'm going to show you in a minute how we can avoid those. But to finish it off, the mass is 20. And so 10.6 at 169 degrees. And we divide it by 20. So uh, about 0.53-ish. And the angle doesn't change, 169 degrees. So there's an example of how you would use the more complicated triangle math. But again, we ran into a problem with our sine law and with that angle, and everything was messed up. So what I'm going to do is go back to another method that we've touched upon before to, to solve this exact same problem. All right? So just to make sure I do everything right here, I'm just going to copy this little guy right here. Um, I'll stick them together and I'll copy them so I can, well, I'll leave them there. Let's copy them. Copy. Okay. Where did my copy go? Where did it go? We'll go down here and we'll paste it in. So we're going to do this very same question again. Um, paste. There it is, again. But we're going to look at a slightly different method. We're going to start by doing the exact same thing we did before. F net equals 
8 plus the 12. But there is another way to add vectors without using those crazy triangles. And this time, we're going to use, instead of tip to tail, something called the component method. Now, you have already learned about components, so this shouldn't be too bad for you. What we're going to do instead is we're going to not draw these tip to tail. We're going to find out the X and Y components of all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little chart here. Let's call this guy A and this guy B just to keep them straight. So what I want to do is I want to find how much of A is there in the X direction and how much of A there is in the Y direction. And then I want to find out how much of B there is in the X direction and how much of B. So I want to find the X and Y components of each of these vectors, A and B. And the way we do that, remember, is um, we look at the vector. Vector A is very easy because it's all up and down, right? It has no lefty-righty motion. So AY is positive 8 for up 8, and AX is 0 because there's no left and right. But when we get to B, we have to do our little resolve this vector into its components. Remember how we learned to do that before. And this side would work out to be 12 cos 30. Now the reason I'm choosing cos is because it's adjacent to the 30. You cannot use cos for x and sine for y all the time unless your angles are in standard position. And often they are not in physics. So in physics, just get used to using cos for the adjacent side and sine for the opposite side. Okay? So 12 sine 30 on this side because it's opposite to the angle. Sine 30 is a half, so that's going to be 6. And then if we do the cos 30, 0.87-ish times 12, this is about 10.4 over here. So what I've discovered by doing this is that vector B has a lefty-righty component of 10.4, but look which way it's going. It's going left, so it's negative 10.4. And vector B has an up downy component of negative 6, down 6. So far, so good. Now what I'm going to do is add all the x's and the y's together. So what I'll get over here is the total, or the net, x movement, which is 0 and negative 10.4, or just negative 10.4. Over here, I'll add up all the y's, y net. And 8 and minus 6 comes out to positive 2. So I've added them up. Okay? All of this is to figure out the sum of these two things. But this is a different method. Now I have a total x and a total y. I'm going to add those together tip to tail. So to add the x and the y tip to tail, I have to draw an x of negative 10. I think maybe I should draw that a little straighter so it looks like a straight line. There's the x, negative 10. Well, I won't put the negative on there either because the arrow shows us the direction. So this is the 10.4 going left. And then a little 2 going up for the y. So I've put together this number and this number, tip to tail, as two vectors. And I'm going to add them. And when I add them, I will get this vector, which should represent the net force. <coughs> so instead of doing tip to tail with a complicated triangle, I've made it turned into a nice, easy right angle triangle, because x and y are always at right angles. So I save all that crazy sign law problem. There's no ambiguous case. I don't have to worry about it. So how do I solve this? I go c squared equals a squared plus b squared. 2 squared plus 10.4 squared. So if you just crunch that out, you'll get about 10.6, which is the same answer we got before which makes sense, because we're doing the same question. Different method, but we should still get the same answer. And then, I have to do tan theta to get the angle. I do this 
little guy right here, right? And I get tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, and I work it out, and this is what I get. Uh, 2 divided by 10.4 equals inverse tan. I get about 10.9 degrees. Now, that doesn't seem like the same answer as before, but it is, because we have to measure from the positive x-axis. And so we're taking away pretty much 11. So the angle for the blue line is actually 169 degrees, 180 minus 11, right? So the answer we get is exactly the same. So then we can go back up here, 10.6, 169, and we can replace this with 10.6 at 169. And then we can put MA here. Remember, this is MA, so I'll put it up here in brackets. And it's 20A. And you can see that we're in the same place as we were before. So I think it was 0 0.53 or something meters per second squared. We get the exact same answer. Here it is right here. Um, yeah, right there. But we've eliminated the need for complicated triangles in this component method. So just to review what we did, instead of tip to tail, we resolved the vectors into their components, their lefty, righty, uppy, downy parts. And then we added up all the x parts and all the y parts to get the total. So this is, in fact, where we did the adding of the vectors. And then we used the total x and the total y right here to make a little triangle that was simple to get to the same answer. Component method. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example to try yourself and then we'll take it up to make sure that you all understand the component method. So use the component method to solve this little problem. And uh, we'll put an object here. And let's say it's 10 kilograms, just to make it simple. Let's pull this way with 20 newtons. Let's pull this way with 12 newtons at an angle of... 50 degrees, and let's pull over here this way at an angle of 30 degrees with 8 newtons. So now you have three forces. So the only difference, of course, is when you go through this process, you're going to have to do this part right here on two different forces, and you're going to have three vectors in your chart. You have to put them all. If there were 10, you put all 10 in this chart. Okay? So go ahead and try that on your own first. And we'll take it up in a moment. And then I'll give you the assignment. Okay, so we'll, uh, first thing we'll do, we can just kind of jot down our, our F net equation. F net in this case, there are three forces now. There's the 20. Newton for, well, you know what? Here, we'll do an A, B, and a C to keep track of them. So we have F A, F B, and F C. If you have D, E, and F G, you just keep adding all the forces up. Doesn't matter how many there are. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to find the horizontal and vertical components of all these vectors. So we'll make a little chart over here. We'll do A, X. A, Y, B, X, B, Y. And now I have to add in a C this time. And we'll see if we can't get the numbers for each of those. So for A, it's pretty easy. A, X is 0 because there's no left and right motion. It's all up. So A, Y is up 20 plus 20. For B, we have to go over this way and down this way. You could also go this way, but why would you bother when you have the 50 degrees there already ready to use? There's no point going this way and then having to figure out a different angle. So you may as well use the 50. So if we do that, then this is the opposite side, so it's 12 sine 50. 
And this is the adjacent side, 12 cos 50. And if you do 12 sine 50 in your calculator, you get about 9.2-ish. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode as well eh, when you do these things. 50 cos times 12 is about 7.7-ish. Then we have to do the same thing over here on this other guy. Now, it's a little bit crowded here, but we'll squeeze them in. We have to do this. And this would be uh, 8 cos 30. And this side over here, I'll just write it up here, would be 8 sine 30. Sine 30 is a half, so we know that's 4. And then cos 30 is 0.87 times 8 gives us about 6.9 for this guy. So let's put those numbers on the little chart as well. Um, for B, we have 7.7 to the right over here. 7.7 to the right. So that means the X is 7.7. We also have a down of 9.2. So the Y is negative 9.2. For C, we have a 6.9 to the left, so negative 6.9. And we have over here 4 up, so 4 positive. Then we need to add all these up, so we want to make sure 7.7 .7 and 6.9 negative is 0 0.8. So that's like the x net, it's the all sum, sum of all the x's. And then the y net <coughs> is the sum of all the y's, which is 20, negative 9.2, and 4, which is about 14.8. Positive. So those are all the sums of all the pieces of these arrows, right? Now we have to put those two x net and x and y net together. 0 0.8 for x, positive. And then the Y is actually quite large, 14.8. And we have to figure out this result. But we have a 90 degree angle, so C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Uh, that would equal 14.8 squared plus 0 0.8 squared. Um, And then the square root. So C comes out to about, well, it comes out to about 14.8 because this side is so small, it really has very little effect on the triangle. So that's not changing everything very much, right? 0.64. So basically it's going to be 14.8. This triangle is almost isosceles, which means we also need angle theta. So we could do a little tan theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and we would expect a fairly large angle there. 87 degrees, that makes sense. And so the net force for this equation, right? Uh, let's go back up here. Here's what I started with right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that down below. And we said that F net is equal to FA plus FB plus FC. But we just spent all this effort to add that up. And we found that the answer is 14.8 newtons. And the angle is standard scientific or standard uh, mathematical angle already. It's in the right position. So it's 87 degrees. <coughs> and that, of course, would equal Ma, and I think we said it was 10 this time, so 10 kilograms times A is 14.8 at 87 degrees. Divide both sides by 10, A equals 1.48 meters per second squared, and the angle stays the same. So that's how you would use the component method to solve the same problem and avoid some of the trickier triangle stuff that can be confusing. Question? Yeah,
14.8 divided by 10, right? We divided both sides by 10. So that would be the acceleration of this object. Okay, and there's an assignment to go with it that will be handed out in class, so make sure you get the assignment if you're watching this video and you're not here. Thank you.